Hey everyone, so I have a really cool video for you today. This is the 240p test suite running on a real Nintendo 64. You can see I have my Nintendo 64 down there with the EverDrive 64. So yeah, how did I get this to work? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So first off, I just want to say this is not a native port of the 240p test suite. We don't have that yet for the N64. However, we can run either the NES version or the SNES, the Super Nintendo version, of the 240p test suite on the Nintendo 64, and that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So, if you like these videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and all that great stuff. But yeah, without uh, further ado, first you're going to want to take your SD card out of your EverDrive and plug it into your computer. Okay, there you go. You see I have that plugged in. And yeah, this I'm on macOS right now, but this should really work on any operating system. So Linux, Windows, even on your phone probably. And then I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it 240p test suite. Okay, there we go. And then we're just going to minimize this for now. And then you're going to want to go to this website and I'll leave a link to this into the description. And I'm going to show you how to do the SNES version first because this is superior to the NES version. And I'll show you why <laughs> later on in the video. But anyway, yeah, just go ahead, uh, go down here to download now. And then, yeah, feel free to donate if you feel so inclined. They do do awesome work. But anyway, then, yeah, you just want to go down here to where it says uh, 240p test suite for SNES. So I'm going to click download. And then I'm going to save it in our 240p test suite folder we just created. Okay, so that's the first thing that we need. And then the second thing is we need a SNES emulator for the Nintendo 64. So we're going to be using this Hydrogen, I think is how you say it. And it's made by Sodium, or no, I think Sodium 64 is what the emulator is called. And then the creator is Hydration. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, you're just going to want to go down here, though, to where it says rolling releases. And again, I'll leave a link for this in the description as well, so you don't have to try to pause the video and copy it. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, just click on under here, assets, sodium 64.zip. Oh, and I'll just mention this. This one I would recommend not saving onto your SD card directly just yet. Just save it into your, like, your downloads folder on your computer. Okay, so there we have that there. And that's because there's going to be two, uh, well, a few different files in here. There's like a readme and stuff. But we only need the actual emulator. So anyway, once you unzip it, they go ahead and open up the folder there. Oh, I guess there's actually not... Re oh, that's right. There's a wrong converter. So, yeah. So, with this Sodium emulator, so you actually can convert SNES ROMs to be N64 ROMs if you use Python. Uh, however, you have to install Python, from what I understand, so it's a bit more complicated. So, instead of showing you all that stuff, I'm just going to show you a really easy way to get this working really quickly. So, what you're going to want to do is just take this Sodium 64.Z64 and yeah just copy it and then you're going to want to paste it into your everdrive folder and you're going to want to go into this ed64 folder here and then you're going to want to go to emu which stands for emulation and then you're going to paste it in here these are your other emulators so you can see it's pasting okay and then you're going to want to right click on it and rename it to smc dot v64 okay just like that so now you've just added a super nintendo emulator that will read smc rom files so now we're going to go back a few steps or a few directories and then we're going to open up this 240p test suite folder that we made and here's our zip file so we're going to go ahead and unzip that okay move that over here and we can just delete this old zip file Okay, there we go. And then just open up this. Oh yeah, this is where the readme text was. I remember there's readme somewhere in this uh, step. Uh, so yeah, so anyway, uh, here is our Super Famicom version. So I'm just going to actually take this and copy it. And then I'm just going to put it in this parent folder. You obviously can decide where you want to put this. <laughs> and even if, I'm actually not even going to keep this original folder. You can keep it there if you want. Again, set up this, you know, folder structure the way you like. This isn't really that important. The only thing that's really important is putting the emulator, as we saw before, in that EMU. But besides that, you can basically put the actual 240p test suite file in any folder you'd like. So, yeah, set that up however you want. But one thing you do have to do is, so, again, we added the Super Nintendo emulator that reads SMC files. However, as you can see, this is an SFC file. And there are tools you can use to change this to SMC. However, <laughs> there is something really easy you can do. 
I found that works on uh, some of these. So if you just change the F for M, this will work. So wasn't that easy? And then just to prove that it works, first I'm going to safely eject this. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our Nintendo 64 turned on with the EverDrive. And you can see here right at the top, we have the 240p test suite. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And then you can see we, there's our SMC file we just renamed. Start game. Give it a second here. And there you go. It's working. So that is how you get the SNES version of the 240p test suite up and running. And one thing with this Super Nintendo version I just want to mention are the controls. So you can see the C buttons. So this is your A, B, X, and Y. Um, so yeah, and then this is start and this is select, which I guess you use sometimes on the 240p test suite, at least start. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, just don't get confused thinking this is A because it's not. <laughs> so yeah, just think of like this, like the Super Nintendo controllers. And then this is R, obviously, and then L is L. And then the D-pad is the D-pad. And Z, like, changes, um, like, the graphics or something on the emulator, like the Z buffering, which I haven't really need to do on the 240B test suite, but it can be useful in other games. Oh, and I forgot to mention the start button pulls up the frame rate of the emulator. So then with that, you can see you can do awesome stuff, like go down here to the grid and, yeah, choose this resolution. That's the most common one. And yeah, then you can calibrate your uh, CRT monitors and <laughs> TVs and stuff, which is really cool. If you're using this for calibration on the N64, just keep in mind that the way you use the 240p test suite to calibrate a CRT monitor or TV is going to be different if you're using this emulator on a Nintendo 64 compared to if you're using a real Super Nintendo. So let's say that I wanted to go in here and calibrate it the way that, you know, a lot of times you would. <laughs> where like more of these red are uh, chopped off on the bottom and top. So yeah, this, this having it zoomed in a little bit more like this, and obviously these are just rough, you know, estimates right now because I'm not really doing this. I'm just basically just showing you this. But anyway, on a regular TV, you want to have, you know, maybe about halfway of the red cut off, you know, somewhere around there. It can kind of depend. However, let me go into Mario 64 and I'll show you the problem. It's me, Mario! Maybe some of you sharp-eyed users <laughs> already see the problem, but I mean, it looks okay. But now on here, you can definitely see it, at least hopefully. If you've looked at this game enough, you you definitely know. So, but yeah, you can see that everything is just like cut off too much. Like there's supposed to be a little bit more shown all the way around the screen, and it's not terrible. But especially once you get in here, then it's even more where it's like, even like Mario's hat is like touching a little bit on the bottom, and like this one up here too. Uh, I guess Lakitu is okay, but anyway, there, it just to be zoomed out just a tiny bit more. And so that is why I highly recommend when you're on this screen just having it so everything is shown, just like to the very edges. Um, maybe just a tiny bit more than the edges, uh, but yeah, that will make it so it looks a lot better. So yeah, as you can see like that where it's like just barely, barely, barely over like on the edges there. Because uh, now you can see on Mario 64, there's a little bit more shown on the top and bottom. And then if we actually go into the game, you can see now there's there's actually like a little bit of space here, which is the way it's supposed to be. The four isn't supposed to be touching touching the top of the screen. And Lakitu also has some breathing room. But again, I just want to emphasize that when you're running this 240p test suite through a real Super Nintendo, then the way you calibrate a CRT monitor or TV will be different than when you're using the SNES emulator on a Nintendo 64. At least as far as the screen size goes, the color calibration is probably the same. So this is the Super Nintendo running the 240p test suite. Like for example, take a look at these dots here. And I haven't calibrated this particular TV yet, but just look where these dots are. They're like about halfway over into the overscan. However, when I switch over to the Nintendo 64, you can see a lot of these dots are now covered up completely in the overscan. And again, I'm using the exact same composite cables. I literally just unplugged it from the Super Nintendo and plugged it into the Nintendo 64 and this is even the exact same ROM file. <laughs> so you just need to compensate for this slight difference as I showed before. Yeah, 240p test suite running off the EverDrive on the 1064 SCNES version. So now I'm going to show you how to do the 
NES version, and I'll even try the Game Boy version. I haven't actually tried that one before, but there is a Game Boy emulator built in to the EverDrive 64 as well as the NES, so it should work. So yeah, that, let, let's go ahead and try that one too. But yeah, again, I don't recommend the NES version because, as you'll see later on, it actually shifts the entire picture to the right. And so when you're calibrating your screen, it actually makes your calibrations uh, off quite a bit. <laughs> but the SNES version luckily doesn't have that problem. But yeah, anyway, the NES version and the Game Boy version, and I guess there's a Game Boy Advance version too. Um, this I don't think this is like an official version of the 240p test suite. This is just something that someone ported to it. So this is actually a different website than what we saw before uh, from the official website. But yeah, this is installing this, getting this to work is a lot easier. Well, I mean, relatively easier. I mean, as you saw, we only had to rename a few files, but this one is just literally copy and paste to get it working. But anyway, I'll leave a link to this website in the description as well. Yeah, we're just going to go into this latest version here. And then, yeah, you can read the release notes if you want. Yeah, just going to scroll down. And then for the NES version, you're just going to want to download this 240pee.nes. <laughs> I don't know what this is supposed to mean, but anyway, yeah, just download that. Okay, and I'm just going to save it in our 240p test suite folder again, right next to the Super Nintendo version. And then just for fun, I'm also going to do the Game Boy version. Okay, and there's our NES and our Game Boy versions there. And so let's go ahead and safely eject and try them out. Okay, go in here. And then we yeah, will do the NES one first. See, so yeah, again, there's no extra setup needed because there's already an emulator built into the EverDrive 64. And there you can see we've got it working. Let's just go into this monoscope thing again. So yeah, pretty cool, huh? And here is where we can see my biggest problem that I have with the NES version of this, at least running on the Nintendo 64 uh, through the simulator. So as you can see, before on our Super Nintendo, we had this calibrated, if you remember, with the center and everything. However, now you can see it's actually moved over to the right. So you can see there's more space here on the left than there is on the right. So that's why I don't recommend the NES version. <laughs> uh, but the NES, the NES version works great. And yeah, because then you can see like if we push or set, you can see where we've calibrated using the SNES version. It's actually, there's like an even amount of space on each side of these bars, and that's good. That's the way it's supposed to be, but if we calibrate using the NES version, there will be a lot more space over here, and this will be like off the edge a little bit. <laughs> I've done that many times, so anyway, don't recommend that. But yeah, and then just for giggles and kicks, let's go ahead and test out the GB Game Boy version. Cool, wow, look at that. <laughs> oh, and this is the... 144p test suite so hey <laughs> cool and yeah it doesn't fill up the whole screen so yeah I definitely would not recommend uh, calibrating with this but hey at least it's centered in the screen I can tell it's centered yeah you can see there so at least it's not like moved over to the right like the NES version so I guess that's one thing it has over it yeah anyway thanks for watching everyone so this is the 240p test suite running on the Nintendo 64 and I pulled up the Super Nintendo version here again so yeah, thanks for watching again. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and uh, let me know what you think of this. And yeah, this should uh, hold us over until we get a proper N64 version, if we ever get one. And I literally just barely found out a few minutes ago that there actually is a native port that's almost done for the Nintendo 64. <laughs> but I already finished filming like almost all of this video. But yeah, this works really good. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll talk to you later. Bye.